Hey everyone, this is Josh Gutman from Petrie Pocus, and in a continuation to the series on reviewing handheld ultrasound devices, today I'm really excited to review the Philips Lumify ultrasound device. Philips Lumify was the first handheld device that I had been introduced to when I was in fellowship over 10 years ago, and I was amazingly impressed with the quality of the imaging and the scans, and I got really excited about the potential for handhelds at that time, and the Philips Lumify has only continued to impress. And so it's a really great ultrasound device, and I'm really excited to be able to review it with you. I'm really excited to be able to show you the transducers and the imaging quality that comes along with it. So firstly, it's compatible with Android or iOS devices. I was given this Samsung tablet to use with it. So that's what I use for the imaging. And with the Philips Lumify, you buy each probe individually. I was loaned all three probes. They are crystal-based probes that plug directly into the tablet. So let me show you. So you have the tablet right here and it plugs really easily into that tablet like right there. And then you can begin scanning. Now, the one thing that stands out when you first pick up this transducer is it's super light. This is almost like holding a toy. Like it's really, it feels like there's nothing in here. It is crystal based, but it feels like there's nothing in there. You each come with a cable and that cable can actually easily be removed and replaced to another probe. So you just pull on the end and it comes apart. And then you can attach it to another transducer. So here's to the linear transducer. The cables are the same for each of the devices. And so you just got to pop it in. And there you have it. And so you have the linear transducer right here, also super light. And you have the curvilinear transducer right here. Again, super light and super easy to use. And the cables are all, you can use one cable for any of the transducers. You can carry all of the, uh, them with you in a pack or buy one, whichever one you would you like. These are on the more expensive side. They're generally around five, $6,000, sometimes listed up to 12,000, but even right now they're on discount, but they can be listed for that, for that expensive, but with price comes a higher quality. So especially if you don't need all three transducers or you're, or you're buying them, you have some funding to buy more probes and you want some of the higher quality that comes along with the expense. This is certainly a good option. Okay, here we have the main screen. I have the curvilinear probe plugged in. And what you first get with the curvilinear probe is the various exams you can do. With the curvilinear probe, gallbladder, abdomen, lung, then I can either scan or create a patient as we go forward. Let's just show you some of the things that you can do outside of scanning. You have the menu here on the left. And so you can still add a patient at the top, change exams. You can review any saved exams you want. I go back to the side menu, you can export, connect it to packs. You can launch Reacts, which is the Philips Lumify system to have teleguidance with others. If you were to have that set up, let's go back. Let's go to settings. You can change a loop duration. It's set to six seconds. There's a bunch of different ones. You can flip the left and right for cardiac. You can change the hand that you hold the transducer some thermal index display, and you can configure it for a barcode scanner, which is really nice if you have access to it. And there's various other things you can do within the settings, including React when you do the teleguidance. So now you can go back to the main screen, go to current exam. We can create a patient if we want to and put in all the information. You can see on the top right, you can query a work list if you have one accessible. One is not set up here. You can scan a barcode or you can then start the exam. I'm gonna go right to scanning. Since I have the curvilinear probe plugged in, it gives me the options for the curvilinear probe, abdomen, lung, ob and gallbladder. Let's just choose abdomen when it's chosen and that's in blue. So let's start to scan. And just to show you what's on the screen, we have the depth on the lower left that you can adjust. You have the gain and go up and down. You can also zoom on the screen by pinching your fingers in and out. You have the freeze button 
over here. You press the freeze. There you can save an image or measure. And you have the color flow and pulse wave Doppler right on the top left. And you can see the presets over here on the right. And if you wanted a full screen, you can press on the bottom right and create a full screen. Let's go back to the regular screen and let's start scanning. Right away on the right upper quadrant, let's adjust the gain to make it a little bit brighter. And you can always see the kind of quality that comes with this image. You can see the diaphragm on the bottom left of the screen, the kidney, the liver. You can fan through. This is if we're doing a fast exam. You can go here to the left upper quadrant. You can see that it has a really nice quality to it, the diaphragm. So that's what the abdomen would look like. I can go on then to scan the bladder up here in long and in short axis. And if I wanted to then measure, I can freeze and then I can annotate. Or here I can measure distances or an ellipse. There's no ability to do a bladder volume formally, but you could do some measurements if you want. If I want to save that image, I would just press save image here on the left. And that would save. I could unfreeze. If I want to save the loop, it's already set at six seconds, as we said. So I save the loop. Here I can fan through. And that loop. If I wanted to look for jets, I can then put color, make it bigger. And I adjust it with my fingers. By pinching in and pitching out. And I can look for jets if I had them. Let's move on to lung. I like doing the lung with the abdominal preset. But I'll show you the lung and the abdominal preset. You can see the A lines and B lines really quickly. If I wanted to take the depth in, it's really easy with just a swipe of the finger here on the side. You can see the lung sliding. If I needed to go in deeper, I could to see that lung sliding. And you can see those A lines really nicely. I guess as I slide down, I can see more of that A profile. Moving on laterally, that depth. You can change that depth there. And I can go up. You can see really in that abdominal, the contour of the liver is really nice. And laterally, I can see nicely into the lung as well. Now, moving on to cardiac, when I plugged the phased array probe in, I got a few of the options, ob lung, abdomen. I'm going to do cardiac, so let's press scan. So let's start scanning. There's the apical four chamber. In a little bit. And you can see the chambers all really nicely. I notoriously have bad views. But you could then, if you wanted to do some, there's the apical five. You can do some color flow. You can choose slow or fast flow. And you can see that the color looks really nice. And again, you could change the, you could change the gate just by, with your fingers, just by pinching in and out and then moving it along. It also has pulse wave. So if you're interested in diastology, you can do that. On pulse wave again. You can change the speed there on the left. I can freeze it. I can do any measurements. I can trace, check the velocities, and do some of the more advanced cardiac stuff if I want to. I can change the sweep speed. I can go ahead and save the image. Yeah, got a pulse wave. You can do M mode. Do a tapsy. And so you can do most of the important cardiac things you can do with some good quality scanning. I'll show you some overall. The ability to do things are nice. The buttons are easy. And it's easy to do measurements too, if that's something that was of interest. 
Tracing is easy with your finger. So I was going to trace across. There's my notoriously bad parasternal long axis view. But even with mine as compared to the other videos, it actually looks pretty nice. I can go ahead and save that. If I wanted to do M mode through the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve, if I was looking for tamponade, I could just move that with my finger, let go, and it gives me the image, and I can freeze that. That I can annotate it if I want to. Let's move on to vascular. Once I plug in the vascular probe, I get these several presets. Let's start with the vascular preset. So let's scan on vascular and can look up at the IJ and carotid. You can see up there, take the depth a little bit down. You can see the carotid both below right there and the IJ right here. And you can see it pop up really nicely and easy to see. Very crisp anechoic inside here. You can see the, uh, the thyroid here really nicely. And if I wanted to put color on that thyroid, it'll really pop and move on to vascular in the extremity. You could really see the vessels move up nicely. Let me change the depth. Putting an IV here would be just as easy as any other probe because things are really differentiated well. You can see the vessels really nicely. If I were to move to the MSK, for example, and I want to look at the uh, tendons and muscles, they will pop up really nicely. Here's an Achilles. Here's an Achilles tendon. You can change again. And you can see how crisp that these muscle fibers look. If you're going to scan the lungs with the lung preset, it can help you with the number of B lines. So if I scan and I check B lines, then it uses Volpicelli's windows where I can gather B lines in each segment and it can help map out the B lines when I'm trying to come to a diagnosis of focal or diffuse view profile. So if I choose R1, that's right anterior. And so I can put it on right anterior and it'll then look for B lines. It's not seeing any B lines. I can then save that loop. I can then save that loop. And then I put auto advance. So now it auto advances. Now I'm at B2. You may have found one B line that you can see. And if I save that, three, which is on the left lower lateral. So if I'm here, I can save. And go on. So I'll go up to R4, which is the anterior superior, and I can save that loop and then it'll keep recording. And now it'll say, okay, move on to the left, but I can always click on the summary and it'll tell me each spot the number of B lines to help keep track of it. And so you get the idea. So just to show you how we can do that, I can go back and it will just keep advancing. Here's a few select images that I took on folks while I was trying out this device. Here's an apical four chamber view. As you can see, the left ventricle here is quite enlarged and you have some enlarged chambers over here, but overall you can see that the quality is really nice. Here's a parasternal long axis view of someone with a relatively preserved ejection fraction, you can see the aortic valve calcification over here really shows up nicely. This is a patient with even larger atria down here. This was a patient with severe mitral regurgitation. And you can just see how well, even in this difficult patient, the quality that comes along with the scanning. Here's a, that same patient. This is not a formal aortic stenosis assessment, but you can see what the color the aliasing over here right at the aortic valve with this apical five chamber view. But again, even with this handheld device, you can see how high the quality is. 
especially with this cardiac scanning. Here's that same patient as a moderate tricuspid regurgitation. You can see with this backflow of this blue color over that tricuspid valve with, again, the nice quality that you can see if you're considering this device. Here's an IBC on a patient who was fluid responsive. This is a patient with a small bowel obstruction. You start to see that the small bowel dilation come here right towards the end of that image. Here's the final measurements that were actually quite easy to do and show prominently on the top of the screen, indicating that small bowel obstruction. So it actually didn't take me very long to image. I was able to measure very easily with my fingers on the screen. This is a patient who had just received a Foley catheter before it could be drained. You can see the Foley catheter inside that bladder very well visualized. This is a patient with an ankle effusion. So this is an ankle joint, and you can see that the fluid here is within the, the ankle joint. Here is the distal tibia, and then over here is the talus, and then here is the fluid. This patient ended up being osteoarthritis after this was tapped. That's it for the Philips Lumify device. I hope you enjoyed this review. Make sure to check out my reviews of the other handheld devices and the rest of the videos that are on this channel. Of course, if you would like education in point of care ultrasound or would like assistance in building your ultrasound program so that it's operational, robust, and ultimately get reimbursed, reach out to me, info at peachtreepocus.com on our website, peachtreepocus.com, and I'll see you on the next video.